and welcome to St. Pölten. Um, quick outline of my talk today. First of all, I will introduce you to a component called substation. Uh, then uh, we will look at how the communication uh, infrastructure inside substation uh, look like uh, on a very high level. And then uh, the last part of the presentation is more or less one way to identify network attacks inside a substation, a local substation, substation network. So, what is a substation? Okay, so let's spend the next 10 minutes looking at the semantic. No. Uh, well, I would say that a semantic is more than 1,000 words. And apart from being icebreaker for my uh, presentation today, uh, this sem semantic, which is actually a substation, you see, uh, it is actually 100 years old, right? Uh, so uh, the message of this slide would be uh, that the pace of development of substations is really slow, right? That's just, uh, it's like analog component which works, just works, no matter what kind of technology we are using, smartphones, uh, they were. And the development cycles, deploying new technology, it's always it's, uh, slower. Uh, then again, to get an idea where the substations are located in energy delivery networks. Um, here's a, a quick recap how the energy delivery works. We have a, a generating station. We know uh, that efficient uh, electricity delivery works best with uh, high voltage transmission lines. And then between the transmission lines and the customers, we have substations. This is basically taking the high voltage. Uh, there's a big transformer which probably would fit in this lecture hall, maybe. Or maybe the size of this lecture, actually. Uh, which then transformed this uh, high voltage to the medium voltage and further than to the voltage which we use in our households. Um, apart from that, substations have or also role of uh, quality control. It's important that we are getting 240 volts actually out of the wall ward. And also some kind of maintenance uh, tasks like if there's a uh, um, construction yard and the electricity has to be cut down, then the guys at substation can do this. Then moving uh, to, towards the security, I mean substations, they are kind of, uh, kind of simple uh, components. Um, But to talk about the, the security of them, um, in modern substations, uh, there are more and more uh, automation involved. Means that there are um, sensors uh, sensing the different substation parameters, voltages, power, and so on. And on the other hand, uh, protection circuitry. Um, there's a human machine interface. But the fact is that uh, the substation, more or less, it also functions automatically. So the, the measurements are coming out of the, the substations, that it's the logic which is actually uh, monitoring that everything's fine. If something's not fine, um, for example, circuit breaking is just flip. Um, um, yeah, exactly like that. And um, another fact is, which I already told in the first slide, is the 
life cycles of, let's say, deployment, new uh, communication protocols, which are running inside the substation, uh, those life cycles are also much longer. There are, I don't have actually uh, hard facts that there are probably uh, communication protocols which are 15 years old, currently running in Austria, Germany, Europe, everywhere. Uh, because they just work. Why should we bother to fix them, right? Uh, then again, uh, in the last few years, there have been uh, pretty serious incidents in the energy uh, market too. Probably the most no well-known is the Stuxnet, not directly on the electricity delivery, but still on the indirectly on the uranium enrichment facilities. Uh, but then again, in 2015, Black Energy shut down 700,000 um, electricity from 700,000 Ukrainians. And so uh, we could expect that these are probably not, not the last incidents. So let's have some uh, very simple uh, train of thoughts. Uh, as kind of motivation uh, why we are researching this topic. Um, first one is this development cycle. Yeah? We could say that substates are kind of stable, right? They don't change from one year to the next. There's no substation X coming on, which everybody wants all of a sudden. They're probably once a substation is deployed, it works for 10 years, okay. And we can uh, then look at it more closely and once we figure out how it works, uh, it probably works then the next 10 years. Uh, but then again, uh, these, we could expect that there are uh, some unknown attacks. So you just know, don't know, zero day incidents coming up, uh, which could be as complicated as they get. Uh, so one way to identify those attacks, which is actually the uh, project out of which this research uh, uh, has come up, is the substation security, this ongoing uh, research project here in St. Pölten University of Applied Sciences. And in this substa substation security project, we are uh, basically doing model-based anomaly detection. So we are trying to um, define the normal state of a local substation uh, network traffic, right? And you know, to understand uh, why and how we are doing this, uh, let's first have a quick look on how the substation network infrastructure is uh, built. Uh, it's a typical SCADA system. We have a human machine interface there. It is connected to a potentially remote substation or more substations. There might be five or so substations in a re network. And Inside a substation, um, there are those sensing devices and actuators, uh, um, which then, uh, when combined with the communication, are forming what's called intelligent electronic devices. And this uh, pretty low uh, on pretty low level, that is where our interest is in in, in this project. We are framing uh, uh, the, the the interest on this uh, level of IEDs, intelligent electronic devices. Right? Uh, 
then on very high level, uh, the local substance networks, they're kind of simple. On the lowest level sits the IEDs, um, and uh, most of the traffic actually are consisting out of measurements. And those are delivered towards uh, the human operator. This can then monitor uh, the measured values or the measured data. Also, what's important to note is, or what is not that much highlighted here, is that we are looking at the uh, today, uh, you, one would say it's already kind of outdated protocol, but it's, it's, kind, it's not true for the substation, it's so-called 104 protocol. Um, but still this protocol is, because it's uh, deployed so widely, it makes sense to uh, use it for, for our uh, modeling purposes. Uh, and secondly, in substance and networks, the second part, which is the smaller part of the uh, traffic, are then uh, different commands. Might be synchronizing the clocks of the intelligent electronic devices, switch circuit breaker on or off, uh, set transformer parameters, and so on. Um, so because we didn't have, and we st still don't have our own uh, substation, uh, it would be nice. But uh, we had to uh, recreate uh, the, or model the substation local network traffic. And we did this uh, by, uh, first of all, uh, we received some actually real network measurements. That's important to notice that we have our simulations are based on real data. Uh, out of this real data, we then uh, divided the traffic to the traffic which is going, coming out of the IEDs and, and coming in to the IEDs. And we extracted the frame numbers, timestamps, in order to create then bidirectional synchronous uh, traffic and the payloads. And apart from that, we extracted also uh, some timing statistics and embedded them into network latency simulation. And there, kind of simple, we just uh, then uh, recreated this traffic uh, situation between two Raspberry Pis, and it worked pretty, pretty well. Uh, to just a quick demo. This is uh, these are the measured RTT statistics from the measured data, and these are the uh, simulated ones. Uh, one more uh, fact or detail, which is uh, kind of uh, interesting to notice, is that the run times are kind of stable. So that would be one feature then uh, in the further mo modeling or uh, identification phase to recognize that uh, uh, for the whole measurement period what we uh, observed, uh, we observed kind of good stability uh, in there. Mm -hmm. uh, the next logical step is then um, when we have the normal data, which is data with traffic without attacks, is then to create uh, different uh, attacks uh, to, uh, to have uh, reference data uh, to test our models. And we just uh, plugged in a laptop and we performed the following passive eavesdropping packet manipulation, those attacks. And uh, yeah, we discussed with, with the experts uh, and we came to the conclusion that these attacks are probably the building blocks for more advanced attacks. And if you can identify these, then we have a good chance to identify more complicated attacks as well. So, now it's your task. You are the animal detectors. Five seconds to detect the anomaly. Who?
Who have who has it already? One, two. Oh man. This this for you guys this would be like a piece of cake. <laughs> yes. Well, don't don't worry guys, this is this is harmless. This was just actually test purpose is to see that we have actually <laughs> Uh, that our attack routes work, but that's right. Um, <clears throat> then to go forward to actually talk about how to detect those attacks, we actually, before we went to into this direction, we actually tried a few different stuff. We we tried to may use uh, deterministic rules. Um, uh, as well as we try to look at, uh, try to define actually uh, the state of substation based on the process data, but this, those, those uh, um, approaches, they turn out to be much, much too uh, difficult and would have required much too uh, manual labor and probably much, much more data. So the approach which we then chosen have chosen is a machine learning approach. It's a pretty uh, popular approach today. The traffic generation and this sub up out of the sub goals or sub uh, tasks, this traffic generation I already explained. Uh, the next uh, phase would be going through the uh, data that you can gener generate it, uh, either with automated analysis or manual analysis, you would ch check what of the parts of the traffic are, are interesting for the modeling of the state of the substation traffic uh, communication. Uh, after this, in the third stage, you would then choose your classification model. Um, and with the last two classification model and evaluation, you would then iterate actually the best model uh, which works uh, for you, for us. So we are talking about um, anomaly detection, also in interest in detection system based on uh, machine learning, uh, model-based machine learning, right? And um, just to give you an idea on um, how the some what the features we have chosen plus how the features uh, change when we have attack and uh, normal behavior uh, on the right side we have the target which is normal behavior um, for those features and on the left side we have uh, those features visualized just uh, to see how they change when there's an uh, attack scenario going on. Uh, of course, uh, when I think about the best, what is the best, best feature? It's this feature which remains stable during the normal behavior and which becomes very unstable under an attack, right? And then um, it comes to the algorithm selection. Uh, of course, uh, there, if, you, if you're a machine learning expert, you would m probably come up uh, with a selection um, um, which would work best for you. Uh, what we did, we just uh, took uh, the best known algorithms. It's kind of easy to just uh, run the algorithms uh, through uh, your data sets and then see what works the best, right? If you don't have millions of data points. Yeah. And these are the, the classifiers. Uh, live base, uh, we have nearest neighborhood, decision learners, rule, rule uh, sorry, decision trees, rule learners. 
And out of the, let's say, the, the first um, uh, results, uh, evolution results, we have uh, got these results um, with the accuracy uh, means correctly classified packets uh, divided by all the packets. And we see that the random forest decision table uh, working the best. Um, uh, then to come up to actually select the best uh, algorithm to use, we need some kind of figure of merits. And for binary classifiers, two class classifiers, we uh, use the um, well known merits like confusion matrix, a receiver, receiver operating characteristic curve. And um, there we see, kind of fast forward a bit, uh, we see that the decision table actually worked the best. So the bigger or near the number is to, to one from F measure record true positive rate, the better. Uh, so to conclude my speech, um, uh, this presentation delivered the points that we uh, achieved during the first year of the of this uh, research project. Um, um, I believe that we, for the first time, we we actually have had the real data out of the real substation. There are a lot of uh, projects which are collecting data out of uh, test bench, like small scale substation. Um, <coughs> but I would highlight that we have. Uh, work close cooperation with uh, Austrian uh, companies and experts. Um, and we came up uh, uh, with a solution which I presented uh, today uh, for the 104 protocol. It's the machine, the machine learning based uh, model, model based uh, anomaly detection is a good solution, right? Good. This marks the end of my presentation. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. I'm also happy to discuss after the after this session.